lights are done. Lights, cabinet lights, coffin lights around the perimeter. We are looking at 22 watts. But the AC is done. Obviously, you've seen the outside. Well, I just got the Blue Eddy AC 180 installed. Well, I just upgraded from the AC 180 that had 1,024 watt hours up to the AC 200L that has 2,048 watt hours. Matter of fact, I even added the B230 battery to this unit. They sync up and that literally doubles this amount from 2048 to 4,096. Well, I got a double sided toaster hooked up to the Blue Eddy AC 200L pulling close to 1500 watts and right now I have the Blue Eddy 350 watt panel hooked up and I was getting a little over 350 watts there for a little bit. I'm pushing. I'd say we got some pretty solid sun here and I'm testing out once again the AC 200L here and right now I'm getting 44.2 volts and before I hardwire all this into my camper I just want to test this out, make sure this cable's good. Looks like I'm getting some solid wattage here. About uh, 335, I was seeing about 340 there a little bit. And I got some pretty good sun here, really no clouds in the sky. I'd say it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I have seen this up to 352, so the fact that I'm getting uh, more wattage than the, what this portable solar panel is rated for is pretty amazing. Um, but I'd say that's probably going to be average, you know, 330, uh, especially when the panel warms up. You know, the bane to any solar panel is heat. You know, the colder it is, the more efficient it's going to be. The hotter it is, the less efficient. But right now I'm also testing the amperage and I'm pushing about 9.5 amps. And I got this clamp style uh, volt and amp meter here. And this is kind of cool. You just kind of clip it around one of the positive wires. And I'm getting this all hardwired in and future video yet to come. Uh, I'm going to have the AC 200 L down here. And I also have the B 230 backup battery. Both the backup battery is 248 watt hours. The uh, AC 200 L is also 248 watt hours. It's 4,096 watt hours. So this would be a huge upgrade. And you know, right now I have, a 10 amp DC fuse here. So this is already good to go. I don't see this going over 10 amps. And I gotta get this all hard wired in. So, you know, if you haven't seen my videos before, I just recently posted this, at least with this upgraded surge protector. You can see it's got special outlets on it. You can see one of the fins here goes to the left. And that automatically tells me, especially with this wire, when I bought this off Amazon, this was a 20 amp surge protector with a built in 20 amp uh, breaker. And, um, you know, this is a very heavy duty 10 3 wire. So this should be perfect for this power bank. Um, I'm pretty sure this is where I'm going to have it. This is going to be my power shelf. Uh, not totally done yet. I literally just got this in. Um, but just to kind of show you here, and I'll turn on this light. Um, just kind of show you how I got this hooked up. I can pull this out a little bit more. Eventually, I'm going to get these secured down so they don't move. But uh, just to kind of give you an idea here, I got my AC input going in for when I have this hooked up to the generator. If I really want to power this uh, battery bank up, I got the solar input going in. And I also had the link cable between the AC 200L and the B230 uh, battery backup. All right, so I have the AC unit running. It's just the fan only. Compressor on the AC unit just kicked in. So this went up to 300 and roughly 80 watts. Currently taking in 300 and roughly 20 watts with the PV350 solar panel. Not a cloud in the sky. So that PV350 panel is damn near running that AC unit. And that AC is running now. I could feel that cold air coming off 
the AC unit. All right, so one last thing I wanted to test here before I complete this installation is I got my gas generator out. I still had the PV300 solar panel hooked up and it's charging the battery. You can see I got this hooked up to shore power. So that power is coming out of the generator into the shore power. And that power is coming down into this breaker box into two 15 amp breakers and that's going out to two outlets one of those outlets is coming out to charge in the input of the ac 200 out and like i said the pv300 solar input the dc input here this is ac input dc output and ac output okay so a solar panel power coming in this is the dc power going out to power the puck lights and the ac out 61 watts roughly for the fridge that's currently running and i just want to test to make sure that this is working got this nifty little remote here to turn on my generator outside while i'm sleeping in bed <laughs> All right, so the, you're gonna watch this kick in. So this is almost at 100%, so not a lot of juice is gonna come off of this generator, but at least I can test this out. You got 70, 78 total watts coming in, pretty much just to uh, supply power to this fridge. Because I also have 300 watts coming in from the solar panel so that's charging the battery so I can charge both AC and DC at the same time so I'm bringing in 300 and you can see that just shut off because I just hit hundred and right now in UPS mode the generator is supplying that power and it's passing it through because the AC tuner out has UPS on our interruptible power supply it's passing that power through to the fridge and that's pretty darn cool so now that I know that this is all working I can finish my installation all right let's get this installation done and get this mess cleaned up now you're gonna notice that it is not grounded why is that because when you use these power banks they have an open ground when you have a battery system like this it doesn't have a ground it just has a closed ground system because it's a it's an enclosed battery unit but with that being said being that i have this hooked up to the generator this will supply a ground now watch this when i turn that generator on you're going to watch this ground kick in see now it's grounded The gas generator has ability to supply a ground and when you you can actually physically hear that ground kick in it supplies the ground to the whole unit because now it's getting shore power from the outside AC 30 amp service pretty cool I'm pretty much done with the updates I just got the four total coats of duck brand roll-on style rubber roofing on the side door here so it now matches the back barn doors and uh if you haven't seen my videos before check out my playlist area there is a section in uh, how i built this cargo trailer camper conversion from scratch one of those parts is specifically on coating these rubber and they are 100 percent waterproof i've been through numerous downpours with these and it looked as good as the day I did it. Uh, very, very durable. Um, if you haven't seen this before, this is the AC unit. I can just pull this out. When I'm done, I can push it back in. Um, but yeah, let's go inside. And before I go inside, uh, some of you guys might not have seen this, but this is my solar power hookup here. So if I want to bring in my solar, I hook it up here. You can see I got these caps that I can put on and off. Um, here is our drain hose here for our gray water for the kitchen sink. The 30 amp shore power hookup. 
All right, cleaned up cargo trailer camper conversion. So we get some power going here. So this is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, let me get some lights on here so we'll get this turned on. And we'll turn on the DC inverter, get the lights going. And not totally sure what we're doing up here, but um, like I said, this is gonna be the power shelf. And I got these locked down pretty good. These are definitely not going anywhere. Uh, the I got a cleat back here, so a two by four cleat there. I got a two, a two by two cleat here. Uh, the B230 battery here is definitely not going anywhere. Um, I got it all synced up and I can easily turn this on too if I want. So when I turn that on, so it does show the sync here, so they're synced up now. Uh, right now the uh, DC puck lights are taking 21 watts. And yeah, this is kind of what I'm doing right now because I didn't want to permanently fasten this in case I wanted to remove this while we're camping. And I just kind of custom cut these blocks here. I can take this one out and I can take this one out here. This one's pretty snug. So I can take that. And then there's this little block up here that I kind of put on a, you know, little rope. I can pull that. And I can pull this whole thing in and out, just like that. I didn't want something that was totally fastened down. And this is definitely not going anywhere. So I can just put this back in. And I decided to keep the EB3A uh, here on the power shelf. It kind of is a backup. I might actually run this for DC power. Um, not totally sure. I think I might actually fasten this one down with pole barn screws, kind of like what I did um, with this one over here for the B230 um, power bank. So you can see the 2x4 cleat back there. Definitely, definitely not going anywhere. Solid as a rock. Um, so I got this pretty much done back behind the TV. I got this all cleaned up now. Got my mass force battery chargers here. Um, just kind of give you a better idea of what this looks like. So like I was mentioning earlier, here's the shore power coming in. So the hydraulic bed, I can lift this up. So like I was showing earlier, there's the 30 amp shore power inlet. So the power is coming in. And then that power comes behind the fridge and you can see that power line going up. And here's my four or five gallon uh, water tanks, which is on a quick connect. So say like this one runs dry, I can just disconnect that, move it back to the rear one here. Easy as that. That one runs dry, just kind of make my way around. Here is the water pump. Here is the quick connect. For the drain so if we're out in the middle of the forest we don't mind dropping gray water just on the ground say like we're parking in the walmart parking lot we can't drop gray water on the ground i actually have another one of these tanks marked wastewater underneath the bed i can take one of these tanks out put that wastewater tank in and i can disconnect this drain and hook it up to my wastewater so it's just super super slick like i said that power comes in from the shore power comes up to here to the circuit breaker box for two total 15 amp breakers and that comes out in two lines to these two outlets and um this has the power coming out and this is the charging cable that goes down and plugs into the ac 200l to charge it uh, if I have shore power, if I want to charge this really quick, we'll say like my uh, gas generator. Um, and then that power comes out. And that is the uh, plug-in for this 20 amp uh, surge protector that has built-in 20 amp breaker. It also is grounded. Um, so I can turn on the AC 
converter. So you can see that turns on. Now that power is flowing out of this cable, up here, down into the surge protector. And then this comes out of these two cables. These are really heavy duty 10, three gauge, um, rated for 20 amp um, extension cables. And I just left one of the male ends on here. So that just plugs right into this. And one line goes to the back. One line goes to this outlet here. And those are our two main outlets. And that takes care of the AC. Um, like I mentioned earlier outside, I'm gonna hook up a solar panel. That power goes into these cables, comes up through here, down into my 10 amp um, DC breaker. Probably don't really need a breaker, but I wanted something that had a manual shut off in case I wanted to shut it off for some reason. Then that negative and positive comes to these two bus bars. Then that gets split up into one, uh, a regular um, eight volt charging if I need it, which I probably never use again, where one goes all the way down and plugs into the AC200L for um, hooking up the solar to this power bank. What's cool about this is it has pass through. So if this is at 100%, this will pass that power through. Um, if it's not 100%, it will charge the battery at the same time. And uh, it's just super slick. And the fact that this AC200L has 248 watt hours, the B230 battery backup has 248 watt hours. Together, we're looking at 4,096 watt hours. And then I even have the EB3A as a backup. I got more than enough power now, so I think this is going to work out really, really good for us. So, um, but yeah, just to kind of show you here for the fridge, at least turn on something that's got some AC power. I got this little switch here for the fridge, so you can see there's no power right now being used for AC. I'm gonna turn on this AC 120 volt fridge. You're gonna watch this spike, went over a thousand watts really quick. And then drop down to 72. And this will drop down to about, usually runs about 50, mid 50s for wattage, high 50s. So while this starts up, it's running at about 65 watts. So you can see the power's on. And that will settle down to about roughly 50, 55 watts. And then when this gets totally cold, and this is totally frozen up here with our ice cubes, this will actually shut off for a long period of time and run zero watts, which is kind of cool. It really saves the energy. Um, but right now, with running all of our lights at full bore, so these are all at full bore on the DC lighting, which is 21 watts of DC output. So you see DC output here, 21 watts. See, so like we're chilling in the back. I turn these off completely. We just leave the lights in the front. You can see the DC output goes down to 14. So like if we really want to chill or watching TV, we want to dim this down. Heck, it's only using eight watts. I could shut this one off and we're down to damn near zero wattage on this. I'll turn this up just a little bit more. We're only using four watts, especially at night when we just want to chill and watch TV. So it uses next to nothing for wattage. Um, but yeah, let me turn these back up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest update to my cargo trailer camper conversion. If you're new to my channel, make sure you uh, check out my playlist area for how I built this cargo trailer camper conversion from scratch. And make sure you subscribe, like, and share because there's definitely more videos to come. I'll see you guys in the future.